we found even more batteries. But we have been told there's another four batteries, yes, four, hiding somewhere. So we're gonna take this van apart to find them and tear down this battery pack to compare it to one of the newer batteries I also got in the arrival auction. We're going on a battery hunt. Safety first. Now, before we rip this thing apart, we do need to check if it's HV Live. And obviously there has been some concerned viewers in the comments from the last video. So we've ripped off all the covers. I'm gonna go, go along here with the multimeter and just check that they're not HV Live. Which they shouldn't be because every battery has its own set of contactors within, which as you guys already know, I still think is a crazy idea. But none of these are HV Live, which also means I don't need my high voltage gloves on, which makes it a lot easier to take this stuff apart with the fiddly little screws that are in there. Oh, and also, it makes this really dodgy multimeter HV safe, maybe. For some really odd reason, there's some tiny little spaces here under the bus bar, which either means they were made wrong or they were trying to use the same end, but they do look different lengths each end, so I don't know what these are about. Let's see if it comes off then. So it looks like the modules were fitted and then these bars. Maybe this might make it easier to take apart. So we managed to get it loose by smashing some in there. Here comes out the first one, I hope. With a bit of a fight. Go on, Nick. You can get it oh, out. Hang on, here we go. There we go. There we go. Look at the state of that. It's a very thin plate. Very thin. There's no strength in that plate. Not even a mark from the lever bar. So these modules here came off super easily. That's because they actually weren't stuck very well at all. If you look closely here, you can see all the marks where it's been applied. There's only small sections here where it's actually adhered to the bottom of the module. So for cooling purposes, it wouldn't be very good. And now the last one on the top side is actually stuck properly. And it's becoming an absolute nightmare to get off. Don't do this at home, kids. There goes the last module from the top side. Oh, there we go. Now we're gonna have to flip the pack, which we might do off camera because it might not be the safest of things to do. Safest thing to do, we've just been prying high voltage battery modules off, Nick, with a pry bar and a hammer. Yeah, but you told everyone there's no voltage leaving them. There is no voltage, and they do have pretty thick aluminium bases, but we have destroyed the cooling plates. Yeah. But let's they... flip it over, and then I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, because I thought there was one good thing about these battery modules. I may have been wrong. So this is the master BMS, even though each one of those has also got a master BMS in. Um, and it's got an ST chip, programming port, some solid state bits for like probably switching and relays, load of CAN ICs. It's quite a nice little thing. Now you all know what my opinion was, was with these, but I've just noticed as we stripped it apart, that at this end of the battery pack, there is also exactly the same holes and the exact same gap on this side. So I'm expecting if this pack was full, there would have been coolant inlets and outlets at that end, and another set of coolant inlets out at this end, which seems a little bit crazy to me. Now let's flip this pack over, which could be interesting. Whee! I can almost like, Shake it like It's a very thin sheet. So I was obviously complaining a lot about the seal on this pack and concerned about water ingress. If you look here, there's some oil on the pack and it's been eating through the seal. So all of this here has started breaking down, meaning long term, with the oil, in, oil on here, it would have seeped in and flooded the whole pack with outside water. So there's actually nothing holding these cooling plates in. No, they're just sandwiched between two modules. Which so it makes you wonder whether they built this, put all these modules in, flipped it, then cooling put the cooling in. plates in. My interest is how it's held in. It almost looks like it's just pushed into these. Earlier I said that there was one good thing about the modules, which I then have decided isn't a good thing. 
I thought with the modules being modular, like they are, if you had bad modules in the future, you could potentially easily swap them out. But if you look at the state of these cooling plates, that is clearly not the case. Now we're gonna have a look under this cover, which looks like it's 3D printed, and just see what little hidden bits there is under here. I think it's just the back of the connectors, but we'll have a little look. The bus bar's a bit hooked on there. I don't think that plug's got plenty of, there we go. Oh, so you got all the H-fill. Fuse, you've got the h fill connectors here. We have some more fuses here. And then under here, we'll have a look. I reckon there is contact just hidden under these two. Okay, let's get a screwdriver, let's find out. If one of your fuses goes, you have to pretty much strip down half the battery pack because I couldn't get this off with this, this row of modules in. So, not a very good idea for the sake of a fuse. Especially when it's a prototype battery, which you're more likely to blow a lot of fuses when you're doing prototype testing. You want yep. to make it easy to access things like fuses. As we know, don't we, Nick? So inside here, there's two contactors, which I'm presuming are CCS contactors, but they are big old clunky units. I don't think I've ever come across these before. And there's something going on under here. Let's quickly cut that back and see what it is. Don't cut your fingers. Nearly. Is it what I, oh, it's what I think it is. <laughs> Why would you do this? What do you think it is? So when you don't have an economized contactor, what you can do is put a device across between the positive and negative to basically make it sort of economize, where it basically recirculates the power back through. It means it draws less power, it means it doesn't heat up as much. Now you can actually buy contactors that are economized because it's what Felton use in every single one of their battery packs. If you don't want to run an economized contactor, what you do is you put this device normally in the main controller of the contactors. This is a bit of a schoolboy bodge that I used to do a long, 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 long time ago. What are you doing in that hole? So these have got these quick fit connectors that you get on a lot of vehicles for cooling systems. Oh, I see, yeah, you just pull the tab out. So take the tab out, I reckon yeah. that. There we go. It's what goes straight onto the end of the cooling plate. So you reckon unpop both of those and the cooling plate just pulls out? I think so. Do you want a hammer? This will fix it. There we go. I pull this out. I now think this By hand. Out. There we go. There is some little O-rings on here to help seal it into there, which isn't a bad thing, but whatever clips were used on here were the wrong clips because they didn't have the little kick up. Yeah. So they a nightmare to get them done. I would now say that this battery pack is officially stripped down and I'm hoping we gave you a good insight into what was going on inside these arrival packs. We're now going to quickly jump over to the other unit and I'm just going to quickly show you inside of one of the new packs, but I'm not gonna take it fully apart. This is one of the newer modules, and as you can see, the lid is completely different. It's actually stamped, so it's a lot more substantial, and it's in steel, because it weighs a bit. Let's take a closer look inside of here. Now, the front of the pack is completely different. There's different mountings. There's a coolant here, there's an in and an out, and then the actual coolant system inside the whole pack is completely different. It's a bit more like you'd see in a Tesla. There's an in point here, and that drops down to each of the cooling plates which then runs under each battery module. So instead of long plates, they've now gone sectional like that with just a manifold that clips in all the way up, which is way better. Now, battery-wise, still same, same type of modules. Uprated buzz bars that are all one piece now as well. Um, and then we've got the massive BMS system in here. And down in here, we have con economized contactors this time, which are a lot smaller and compact and all the fusing. The benefit with this one is there was actually a panel that covered this that you could pop off you could access all of the fuses. So clearly, long-term, when they did a redesign to the newer van, they made an awful lot of updates that in my head probably should have been on the first prototypes, but they finally got there with these packs because they are considerably better. We're going on a battery hunt. First place we're gonna look for the 12 volt and 24 watt system is in this box, because there is on this side, if you come just here, some connectors here, which are definitely 12 volt and 24 volt, not high voltage. Let's get this out then, shall we? 
That cheeky little inverter. It says 24 volt input, 12 volt output. So I wonder if it's got a 24 volt system in the back, but it runs on 12. So we figured this would have been held up with straps and the whole thing would drop out together. But if you look in here, they've actually bolted this piece in first, built this whole assembly and then glued it into place. It was a fact there was like tank straps around it that made it look like it was held in like a fuel tank. Like why would you fix that in like that? Why wouldn't you build the whole thing on a bench and then put it all up in afterwards? I don't understand why, but it is actually sealed really well with this butyl sealant, which means it never goes off properly. It's always a little bit stretchy. This is what Felton used on all their battery packs. Definitely the right move. Would have been way better using that sealant on the battery packs. Me thinks. So I think we've probably got all of Looked it off. away. There we go. Let's pull this out onto a desk and have a closer look, shall we? Now we've got it out on a desk, we can have a closer look at what is going on. Now we have two 12 volt batteries that are linked in series to jump to 24 volts. 250 amp fuse that goes to what I'm understanding is probably a buzz bar that can take a thousand amps. <laughs> um, this must be a 24 volt DC to DC. It's linked in here. Now what I don't understand is on here there is a 24 to 12 volt. There's I think a 12 volt battery in the front as well. So I don't understand why we have a mixture of 12 and 24 volt. You think by van number 16 you would have made a decision between are you running a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system. Now this is their DC to DC units which actually do look quite nice. Um, they're quite a pretty unit, but most vehicles now are going DC-DC charger all in one. Otherwise, because you use a lot of the same power electronics. Let me pop the bolts off so we can have a quick look inside. So you can see what's going on inside of this DC-DC. What I find quite interesting is just here, there's a 64 gig SD card buried inside the DC to DC. Now I can't say I have ever seen that before. And I'm probably gonna plug that into my computer and I'll put a short out about what was on that card, if anything may have been doing lots of data logging, but yeah, there's an awful lot going on inside in here for a DC-DC. It's liquid cooled, so it's probably a really nice unit. Um, and as normal from arrival, all the PCB design stuff was done extremely well. In the back of here, there's also another PDU, another one out of the other eight that's on the vehicle, and this unit, which I don't actually know what it is. If you take a close up on that, maybe you have a look online and find out what it is, but this is something that arrival have not designed themselves. All of this has obviously been made bespoke, um, but it, I, just, I don't know, it just seems like an awful lot going on in here, which could have been maybe put somewhere else in the vehicle. It's quite complicated. And the fact that this was bolted in and then this was sealed into place so you couldn't take it out without doing what we've done, seems a little bit crazy. You'd think you'd build this all on a bench as a complete unit and then just put it into the vehicle. And if you had an issue, you just drop the whole thing out. But you know, that's just... And what about this bit? Oh, and this is a 12 volt kill switch, which is not actually wired to anything. So it does nothing. Normally, I think on the other vehicles that would have broken this contact just sat inside of here. Now, more arrival madness. Up in the front of the vehicle, we think there's some more 12 volt batteries though. After dropping out that 24 volt at the back and on these little connectors here, we still have 12 volts on each one of them. So that means that there's more batteries, 12 volt batteries hidden in the front of here somewhere. Now, future episode, instead of doing it now, we're gonna rip the whole front end off this, and I'm gonna show you the full HVAC system that Arrival developed, because actually, it's really, really good. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe and come back for all of our future builds.